Hey Han, I'm Chloe and this is the Inverted Bowl tutorial. My mission here is to share my passion for pole dancing and make pole dancing easy to learn and accessible. This is the 11th video of the Intermediate Pole Trick tutorial series. In order to maximize your training out of all the videos, I highly recommend you to start from the very first video of this playlist as the tricks will be a progression of the video before. I love a good inverted ball. I think it looks really dramatic. Um, the prerequisite for this move is that you've done your invert outside leg hang and also the pike tutorial. So make sure that you've watched that before. This video is mirrored for your ease of learning. I'll have a red wristband on my right wrist and my right ankle to indicate the right side of my body if you do get confused of the directions. This trick tutorial is created for you for information and educational purposes only and for you to enjoy learning pole dancing from the comfort of your own home. Please participate at your own risk and do not work beyond a capability and seek help or spotting when necessary. For any health concerns, please make sure you seek professional medical advice. Please make sure you warm up your body before you start this video. I have a warm-up playlist depending on the level, so make sure you try that warm-up before you do the tricks. If you enjoy this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up so that I know to create more of these kinds of videos and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet so that you are notified every single time I upload a video. If you're looking to further your pole journey and combining tricks and dance together, then consider subscribing to my online learning platform, Pole Art Vault, where you'll be learning an entire routine with trick combos and dance together. For further information, you can find the link in the description. Alrighty, without further ado, let's get into our inverted ball tutorial. Alrighty, now let's get into our conditioning. Now, with our conditioning for the inverted ball, I'm only going to go through conditioning that requires a tuck position. So if you are looking for conditioning involving anything to do with inverts, uh, your straddle inverts, outside leg hang, or the pike, make sure that you've watched those tutorials before you start this one. So, coming down onto the floor. We are going to do our knee tucks sitting on the floor. So, if you need to grab the pole with your inside hand, this is going to be a little bit easier. If you want to take it up a notch, both hands back. If you want to make it even harder, hands come forward. Make sure that you keep your posture upright. Try not to hunch too much here. And then we're going to tuck that tailbone in and engage through the core. Now, I'm going to demonstrate the one with the hands back first. I'm going to extend my legs and then I'm going to tuck, extend, tuck, extend, tuck. Now when you're doing these, remember, try not to hunch your back and roll your shoulder in. I, I want you to tuck by engaging through your core. So you're actively engaging through your quads and then engaging through your core and try not to use your shoulder to bring your knee in. So if you feel like you're hunching, then it might be easier if you grab the pole and lean slightly far back and then bring your knee in. Now if you want to take it up a notch, go ahead, hands come forward and then you can do your knee tucks in this position. Alright, so let's do eight. I'm going to do the pole version and eight, seven, Six, good ankles together, five, knees together, four, three, two, and last one. Well done, that's your conditioning done. Alrighty, now let's get into our inverted ball. This is what it looks like. Alrighty, now let's get into our inverted ball. Now for this one, I do have the pole on static, but you can obviously do this on spin or static, they both work. I do 
prefer this on spin, but obviously this is super subjective, so there's no right or wrong. So, we're coming into our invert outside leg hang into a fold over. All you need to do is tuck your knees in, grab your shins, and there's your inverted ball. Remember that I'm not gonna go through the technique for your straddle inverts, outside leg hang, pike today. So make sure that you've watched those tutorials before you start this one. So, invert, outside leg hang, pike. Now once you get into your pike, you're gonna bend your knees in, think about kicking your ankle all the way to your booty. Now when you're crossing your legs, um, you can keep your ankles together or cross them over. I kind of like them crossed, so I cross my inside leg over the outside. Then I'm going to bend those legs in. Then I'm gonna pull those legs in, knee to chest, and then you're gonna grab your inside shin and head to knee. To come out, take those hands off, extend your leg back into a fold over, hook that outside leg back, and then drop it down. Well done. Let's try this on the other side. Now on the other side, just to switch things up, I'm going to demonstrate on a spin pole because I kind of do like the fact that once you tuck into a ball, it gives you that extra spin. So, we're gonna come into an invert. Outside leg hang. Fold over. You're gonna cross your legs if you'd like, tuck your knees in, and then into a ball. Fold over, straddle, then stepping down. Ooh, that got me dizzy. Now you can see um, that once I come into the ball, it creates that extra spin, which is quite nice on a spin. So give that both a go. You can do both static, or if spin really gets you too dizzy, remember that you can always just put the pawn static. Now, just a little um, reminder on spin, if you do feel like you have a tendency to get really dizzy, remember that you could be dehydrated, maybe you're not eating enough, sleeping enough. Those three key points. Now, lastly, um, if you do get dizzy, I know some people pr prefer to take um, anti, kind of like dizziness pills where, um, I think those pills are used for like when you drive or you get seasick. I know some people take that. This is not a medical advice, by the way, but I know some people do that just as an option. I've heard um, and um, you can also just keep practicing spinning because the more you practice, the less dizzy you get. You get used to that spin. Well done. All right, now let's go through some tips and common mistakes. Now, our first common mistake, you haven't watched the tutorial yet. Make sure that you've watched the straddle invert outside leg hang pike tutorial. These are going to be your three essential tutorials so that you can really nail down the inverted ball. If you've got those, you can definitely do the inverted ball. Now, there's not many um, tips and common mistakes for this one because if you've got the inverted, uh, sorry, the pike down pat, then you should be good to go. The only few um, tips I would probably give you is that once you come into your ball, make sure that you're really pulling your knee towards your chest as much as you can. So that means that you're going to have a slight shift through your grip point. Um, initially, it would be a little higher up your inner thigh, but the more you bring it down, you're gonna feel it a little bit more on this upper part of the inner thigh. So it's gonna move from here to there, and that is totally fine. And it might slightly hurt initially if you're not used to that grip. Um, and remember with pole, the more you do it, the less painful things get as well. 
Now the other thing in the inverted ball is to ensure that you're really hunching your back. I know it's not going to feel the best, but the more you hunch your back and the more you bring your head towards your knee, think almost like you're trying to knee your face, that's going to make that inverted ball look much nicer and it just looks much more synchronized. It will look like an inverted ball. If you're looking down or maybe you're arching your back, it doesn't look as ball-y, if that makes sense. I'll just show you what I mean. So let's say for example, I'm here and I'm just tucking my knees. You can see that it doesn't look much like a ball. If I pull my knees in and then tuck my chin in, really think about kneeing your head, um, and then you're grabbing your shin, pull those shins in, then that's gonna create that ball look that you'll like to achieve. So that would probably be my only tip. Remember that always exit nicely, enter nicely. Those are obviously your prerequisites for any movie you do. But that is all your tips and common mistakes. So before I let you go, I've got a little mindset tip or maybe even training tip for you. Now, when it comes to training at home, I know that it becomes really tricky, especially when it comes to motivation. Now, setting up your space or training space, I think is the most important thing when it comes to training from home. Home is obviously where it's very comfortable and the more you're comfortable, it actually is almost like a double-edged sword. You might feel comfortable training, but at the same time, it's actually really hard to get up and start the training because you're so comfortable. I know that a lot of people have this roadblock of wanting to feel comfortable in their own training um, but you know getting up at the same time it's just you know that balance of training and comfort because we're a little bit tricky at home now what I like to do is when I have a training space whether it be at home or even at the studios I make sure that I feel super motivated um, and I it's almost like I want to train now Yes, setting up your training space. I usually make sure that I have a ton of space around me. Um, I also try to surround myself by things that I know that I can achieve. So let's say for example, when I'm going through tricks, I ensure that I am putting a mix of things that are hard, that it's a little bit challenging, and also things that I can achieve and I know that I can achieve. So say for example, um, today I want to go through maybe three tricks in one hour. If I challenge myself and do three tricks that I cannot do or that's extremely challenging right now, and when I say I can't do, I mean like I can't do now, but if I train, I definitely can is that you start to feel demotivated because these are things that are essentially, you feel terrible because you feel hopeless of not being able to do this. So what I like to do is I give myself one trick that's challenging, one trick that could be achievable and one that I know for a fact that I can achieve and that's going to make me feel really good. So remember to always mix up your training, set up your training space exactly the way you want it. Um, remember to kind of cut out distractions as well because the more there's distractions, it's going to be really hard for you to train. I know training by yourself is really hard. I hope I can really motivate you through these mindset tips and also through these trick tutorials as well. Thank you so much for joining me in the inverted ball tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I shall see you in the very next tutorial. Bye. Oh my God, y'all, look at this. My middle finger nails are cut. This is why I never go to bouldering or rock climbing because this is what happens.